In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at the process of designing your own custom mask. This comes as a request from one of my subscribers. Now in this context, we're going to play this video of a guy doing the butterfly stroke in a pool. And let's assume that for some reason, we'd like to have a, an image move across the pool in front of him, and we accomplish that using a mask. So we're going to use this particular image here, and we're going to isolate the man in the boat and make it look like he's floating across the pool. Might be rather odd, but at least it'll show you the principle. We're going to show you a seven second clip, and then we'll show you a little bit about how to design that using the mask designer in more recent versions of CyberLink PowerDirector. So the first thing I want to do is take my graphic image and drag it to a higher numbered track than my video. Here it's track 2. And then with that highlighted, I'm going to click on the Tools button above the timeline and choose Mask Designer. It opens up my Mask Designer window. Now you see I already have a mask that fits this that I did earlier for the example, but let's create another one from scratch. I'm going to click on Create a Brush Mask. That's the third button down below my mask examples. And that opens up my Brush Mask Designer window. When I'm using this tool, I like to start out with the largest size possible. Now we can choose a round mask or they call it flat. I would call it square. I'm going to enlarge it. And then I have the largest circle. And we'll take the general area around and we'll start to mask that. And so I go with the largest one. Now, the one thing I like to do, because sometimes it's hard for me to draw straight, is you can simply hold the circle or the square by the object and click on it. And that allows you to get a lot of masking done if your hand isn't all that steady in some other areas. You can use whichever technique works for you. So I can drag it or I can simply get really close to the edge of something and click it. And that will reduce the size of the mask. And so what I tend to do when I'm masking in a situation like this is I'll start it with this large brush size to get the most re removed from the picture as quickly as possible. And then when I've got the big areas covered, I simply go back and I reduce the size of the brush and we repeat the process on a smaller scale. Again, if you make a mistake, the easy way out of it is Control Z or another thing you can do, let's intentionally make a mistake. I'll click here and there I've got part of the paddle that I don't want to be eliminated in the mask. I click on the eraser tool. Now the eraser tool is only rectangular or square. And I can change the size, but that's a way in which I can restore what I've erased. Now one thing I do not like about this program is it will not let me enlarge the screen beyond the size of my monitor. I can't go like to a 200 or 300 percent size in getting right down to the pixels when I'm working on this project and I wish I had a way to get a lot tighter and zoom it in even more, but at this particular juncture I can't do that. So that would be one of my recommendations for an improvement in the program in PowerDirector. We're a long ways from being done in this particular case, but what I'd like to do is at least show you a little bit of what my next step would be assuming I had gotten it right. I'm going to click on OK. Now I need to click on Invert Mask. And so that just puts the boat here. Now again, we've got a very rough version of it. So I'm going to click on OK again. Get out of my mask designer. Then if I want the boat to actually move across the video, 
with the image selected. I'll double click and get into my PIP designer. And then in the first frame, I'm going to set a position value. And we're going to, let's say, move it off the screen to the right. And then I'll go in a number of frames, minutes or seconds. And I'll drag to the left off the screen. And that set the second keyframe. So when I play this segment of the video, even though my mask is far from perfect, we'll see that I have the masked image and he slides across the screen from right to left. We don't have to put the mask in motion. I would still use the same mask technique, but I wouldn't need to keyframe the graphic image at all. So that's a very simple look at how you can make a mask that's highly irregular in CyberLink PowerDirector. Mm -hmm.